This is How to Drink, the show about making cocktails and how to drink them. I'm Greg, and I have never been a professional bartender. I've never even had a job in a bar. I don't worry too much about precision and technique, because at the end of the day, if the drink you like is in the glass, you did it right. Let's get going. We're talking about Fish House Punch and Double Indemnity, and how do those two things go together? Because they don't drink Fish House Punch and Double Indemnity. First off, let's talk about Double Indemnity. What is Double Indemnity? Well, it's a 1944 classic noir directed by Billy Wilder, starring Fred McMurray and Barbara Stanwyck, and in a supporting role, Edward G. Robinson, one of the great actors of the gangster period. Very famous for uh, talking like this, you understand, and uh, I'm doing a really bad Edward G. If you ain't out of town by tomorrow morning, you won't never leave it except in a pine box. Little Caesar, for example. Fred McMurray, you probably are more familiar with Fred McMurray's roles in Disney films like The Absent-Minded Professor or The Shaggy Dog, I think he was in, or Follow Me Boys. Really has this squeaky clean, super clean cut, all American dad kind of image in the 60s. Uh, but in 1944, he was starring in really just the most sordid and unsavory of noirs directed by Billy Wilder. It is definitely not the nadir of Billy Wilder's depravity that might happen in An Ace in the Hole. Why don't you wash that platinum out of your hair? Nonetheless, it's pretty bleak stuff here in this movie. Barbara Stanwyck, actress I am obsessed with. No, Chico stay. All right, all right. Uh, Double Indemnity is a really, really fantastic noir. Fred McMurray plays an insurance salesman trying to sell car insurance to a upper middle class, sort of wealthy guy finds his uh, housewife at home, sort of a desperate housewife type character, played by Barbara Stanwyck in a ridiculous looking blonde wig. I'm Mrs. Diedrichson. What is it? How do you do, Mrs. Diedrichson? I'm Walter Nett, Pacific All Risk. Pacific All what? The Pacific All Risk Insurance Company. It's about some renewals on the automobile. You'll be watching this movie and say, why did they put her in that wig? Well, it's real possible that Billy Wilder uh, is covering his ass when he says that he wanted the wig to look bad in much the same way that Orson Welles kind of avoided the question of how does anybody know Charles Foster Kane's final words in Citizen Kane? Uh, because it could be true that partway through filming, Billy Wilder realized the wig looked bad and came up with the quick excuse of, no, no, I wanted it to look bad. That was my plan. Billy Wilder was that kind of a director. Billy Wilder is a Polish director who escaped uh, from Poland in the eve of the advancing Nazis, uh, made his films in America. So in some ways, I mean, when I was going to film school, we learned Billy Wilder as being foreign cinema. I don't think that's really true. I think he's an American filmmaker, but one of my professor's opinions was that he was a foreign director. That's very nativist of him. It's all about Barbara Stanwyck trying to take out a life insurance policy on her husband and have him bumped off to collect the dough. And she teams up with Fred McMurray, the insurance salesman who knows how to make it all work. The double indemnity kicks in that there is a double indemnity clause in the insurance contract so that if he dies by virtue of murder, uh, they get double the payout. Of course, this would necessitate framing somebody for murder. It's some dark stuff, man. Fred McMurray's just trying to get a piece of that strange. That's not the way to say that. Mr. Neff, why don't you drop by tomorrow evening around 8.30? He'll be in then. Who? My husband. You were anxious to talk to him, weren't you? Yeah, I was, but uh, I'm sort of getting over the idea, if you know what I mean. There's a speed limit in this state, Mr. Neff. Fred McMurray is just instantly smitten and infatuated with Barbara Stanwyck and is putty in his, her hands, desperate to make this thing work for her. Just, I don't know what his motivation is. He's just broken inside and, and she's just kind of evil. Fun fact about Barbara Stanwyck, uh, only would work with Ori Kelly. Ori Kelly, famous gown designer. It's a name you'll see in a lot of movies, gowns by Ori Kelly. O-R-R-Y hyphen K-E-L-L-Y. Uh, Australian fellow. Uh, who in the vaudeville days was Cary Grant's roommate and um, boyfriend. I didn't see that, by the way. I want to point out, my wife said that for years. We saw a documentary that proved the point. I was, I lost a bet. I thought he was straight as an arrow. I had no idea. Did not trigger my gaydar. So Ori Kelly, always going to be designing her gowns. Why? Well, Barbara Stanwyck was convinced that underwires would give her breast cancer, and so she refused for her entire career to wear a bra, and only Ori Kelly could be trusted to engineer the necessary support structure without an underwire. 
I know a lot about Barbara Stanwyck's boobs. Oh, why am I making a fish house punch? I haven't even gotten to that yet. Why a fish house punch? So I want to do a drink for Double Indemnity. I'm watching the movie and they're not really drinking anything that's a cocktail in it and I'm looking for inspiration. At some point, she invites him in and offers him some iced tea and he kind of jokes. I mean, with me around, you wouldn't have to nip. Wouldn't I? Bet your life you wouldn't. What if a little rum would get this up on its feet? Just so happens that black tea and rum is the basis for an old style of punch called Philadelphia Fish House Punch. Knowing that, I decided we would make Fish House Punch. With a, a large scale punch like that, you'd make it at room temperature, put it over big blocks of ice, and it would chill over time. To make that single serving cocktail in a mix shaker and have it come out cold, uh, and not wanting to over dilute it, I decided that what we should do is take some black tea, I'm using an Earl Grey, and freeze it into cubes. So we're going to be shaking with these really ugly cubes today, just so that we can simultaneously get tea and cold into the drink. Something happens when you freeze tea, uh, it really does not want to let go of your ice cube molds. So think about that before you make that. I think I kind of wrecked my ice cube molds making this. Um, it is super hard. It's like pie cream. Okay, so here we go. Shaker time. Let's get going. I'm gonna start with my lemon. Let me cut this lemon in half. That was a half an ounce of lemon juice. I need a quarter ounce of lime juice. Want a half an ounce of simple syrup. The rest of this drink is all in equal parts, so I need three quarters of an ounce of peach brandy. Three quarters of an ounce cognac. What I needed was three quarters of an ounce cognac because my head was jumping like a bread box full of grasshoppers. Those are the kinds of things you would associate with a film noir. Three quarters of an ounce Jamaican rum. I'm using uh, Smith & Cross here for a little extra heat. He poured three quarters of an ounce of pirate juice into the grog bucket he was mixing up and I wondered, would I ever get out of here alive? Who won't? And that's it, we're ready to shake. I'm gonna shake this over frozen Earl Grey tea. I'm gonna serve this in a single rocks glass on a cube. Garnish that with a lime wheel and cherry. actually really lovely. So the acid and the peach really actually have a great interplay that happens in this drink. Mm. That's a good drink. Yes, I think that I could see having a number of these on a hot summer day. I like this drink a hell of a lot. This is very similar to a daiquiri, but with just hints and essences of peach that you don't normally find there, of course. In any situation where a daiquiri is an appropriate drink, this uh, individual fish house punch will also work. You definitely are getting some of that Earl Grey bergamot from the tea that we shook it over. That is present, there's the tannins and a little bit of bite of bitterness that separate it. Because a daiquiri is sour, this brings bitterness that a daiquiri doesn't normally have, but in a very, very pleasant and enjoyable way. Everything is really working in unison and in concert to make this drink very, very enjoyable. Much like the masterful directing of Billy Wilder in 1944's Double Indemnity. Great movie with a great cocktail now. This is the now official cocktail of Double Indemnity, the Fish House Punch because of a throwaway line by Fred McMurray. I don't know if I can make that claim. I don't know if I can claim to assign the official cocktail for a movie, but TCM, if, you, um, if you're looking, I'm available and willing. I can, I'll take that job. Uh, that's the episode, guys. Thanks for watching the show. I will see you guys next week with another cocktail. Hey, if you like the show, do me a favor and subscribe. You can check out my Instagram at How to Drink. You can check out my Twitter at How to Drink. You can check out my Patreon. It's up there. And I will see you guys next week with another cocktail. I will be sipping this drink in the meantime and dreaming of Barbara Stan. This actually keeps getting better. This drink keeps getting better. Of course, much like Barbara Stan, I could just try to stab me in the eye. Whoops! Well, that's the episode.